All right, we're going to do a study today on whether or not the rapture is imminent. Okay, now most people, when you get to talking about the timing of the rapture, they will turn you to Matthew chapter 24. So let's go there. They'll say, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Well, let's look about that. Okay, Matthew chapter 24, we'll begin in verse 29. What is the timing? When are, when are we going to see Jesus? Are we going to be able to know? Are we... Is it imminent, or is there some kind of way to know the exact time when he's coming? That's going to be the purpose of this study. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and th then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Uh, the Lord puts a seal upon these prophecies and says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So you can be sure of what the Lord is saying here. He's not saying, like some of the false prophets out there, well, we might be able to know the day. I'm not saying it's definitely going to be September 23rd. It could be. It might be. Maybe, possibly, perchance. <laughs> no, that's not how the Lord speaks, and that's not how a Bible-believing Christian speaks either. There's certainty. The Lord says, this is what's going to happen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He's saying, you can count on what I'm saying to you here. All right. But what is this event that's happening here? Is this something for the church, the church age time? No, no, it's not. This has nothing to do with what's going on right now as Christians in what we would call the church age. This is in relation to the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. How do you know? Well, go over to verse 16. Let, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Verse 20. Neither on the Sabbath day. What are Christians doing in Judea? Uh, why are they caring about the Sabbath day? Also, um, in verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Uh, that's talking about Jews seeing the Antichrist, the abomination of desolation, in other words, standing in the holy place, their rebuilt temple. Um, Christians, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the temple of God, it says over in 1 Corinthians 3. Our body is the holy place. We're not going to be seeing the Antichrist standing inside of us. Okay, It's talking to the Jews over there. And again, what is Matthew 24? Who's the, the crowd that he's addressing? Christians, you know, Christians... <laughs> No, he's addressing Jews. All right, The prophecies are for them. That's why you see there in verse 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. The Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. The signs are for the Jews. All right, That's what's there. All right, This has nothing to do with Christians. It has nothing to do with the body of Christ. This is about the second coming. Obviously, again, you compare... Scripture talks about the sun and the moon being darkened and all that other stuff. And uh, compare that with what's going on in the book of Revelation. That's the same event. And the posty, you know, pre or post trib, pre wrath wing nuts, uh, they have to come up with this thing. Uh, there's actually two second comings. There's one, you know, after Revelation 6 and then one in Revelation 19. Uh, it's a weird system. So they have three comings of Jesus Christ. Uh, you say, what about pre-tribbers? They have three comings. No, we don't. We believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ and the rapture of the body of Christ goes up. All right. Now, we'll say Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming soon. But we're not saying that he's going to touch down on the earth. All right. We're not saying that. So, just to clarify that thing there. But these, this passage is talking about the second coming. It's not talking about believers going up into the clouds to be with the Lord and go to heaven for a time and then and then come back down later or something. No, Jesus is coming in the clouds. They look up and they see the sign, the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds. 
all right? And when these people are being gathered together, they're not being called up. They're being gathered together into a place. If you look at uh, verse 28, for, where the, for wheresoever the car carcasses, thither, there will the eagle, eagles be gathered together. If I can get it out. <laughs> Revelation 19 is talking about the second coming, all right? See? That's what's going on here. They're gathered in the sense of they're being taken out to this area where they're fleeing into the wilderness. They're being gathered to that battle of Armageddon. That last remnant of the Jews that haven't been wiped out by the Antichrist. And the Antichrist assembles his army and goes out after them to get them and to slaughter the Jews. Because see, if the Antichrist can destroy all the Jews, the true descendants of Abraham through Isaac, if, he, if the Antichrist can destroy all them, then the covenant falls through that God promised to give the land to the seed of Abraham, the physical seed of Abraham, the promise falls through, God's proved to be a liar. So the Antichrist is going to try to destroy all that physical seed of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob down through. All right, That's why they're working so hard at that. That's why the Catholics have worked so hard at that over the years. That's there. But let's continue here. Verse 36. But of that day... An hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And by the way, the Son of Man, that's the, the name that the Jews are looking for their Messiah. He's going to be the Son of Man. Uh, Paul never refers to Jesus as the Son of Man. All right? We are not, we don't, you know, to a Christian, a Gentile Christian like myself and like most of you out there, we look at Jesus Christ, the genealogy, and we just kind of go, Okay, you know, we can't say, well, yeah, my uncle's, you know, great grandfather and whatever else ties back to such and such tribe and this tribe. And no, I have no relation to Jewish tribes. All right, I'm a German, German descent. I'm a Gentile, you see. So the Son of Man doesn't really mean anything to me. Son of God does. See, that's an important distinction. And of course, you, you know, it's all through Matthew 24 because it's talking to the Jews. But uh, it says there, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Now see, the posties will say, Well, see, then that, that has to be about the rapture. It can't be the second coming, because if it's the second coming, then you could just say when the Antichrist confirms the covenant, Daniel 9, 27, then you just go seven years. Yeah, except for one big problem. Uh, verse 22, Matthew 24, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now notice, it does not say in, in verse 36, but of that day, hour, month, year. It says day and hour. All right? They will know the year. They're going to know the year when, you know, it's going to be seven years from the time of the confirming of the covenant. On seven years from then is going to be the second coming of Jesus Christ. They'll know that. They'll be able to get close as far as month is concerned. But at day and hour, they won't know that. Why? Because the days are shortened in that time period. So it's not going to be 24-hour days. Oh, there's going to be some really, you know, cataclysmic... It's, it's funny because I've seen now that these... Uh, a lot of the scientists are starting to come out saying that there's going to be a mass extinction uh, event, you know, where humankind is going to cease to exist... Um, by like 2100, like within the next 100 years, there's going to be a mass extinction event. <laughs> and I'm going, uh, yeah, you, you might want to read Revelation. You know, you'll, you'll see about it there. Okay. Um, even they're seeing it. Even they're seeing that the environment is just a ticking time bomb. The, the governments and everything else, it's a ticking time bomb. There's going to be a huge explosive war, cataclysmic problems and all kinds of stuff. Um, and, you know, the, the knuckleheads that are going to be fighting these wars, it's going to be nuclear. It's going to be massive weapons. Uh, I do believe that they can manipulate weather. I don't believe they can control it, but I can. I do believe they can manipulate it through cloud seeding and, you know, some of the other stuff like that, uh, the harp stuff and whatever. Um, and doing all that stuff, and, you know, the, the governments of this world are crazy enough to do it. And if they start messing around, they're going to make huge earthquakes. I mean, you know, even the thing... Sorry for a little tangent here, but even the thing of uh, hydraulic fracking that they're doing to get the gas out all over America, they're causing earthquakes because of that. I mean, you know, you drill a hole down at a big angle down in like this and then sideways, you know, like that down through all the shale and then you pump 
liquid down in there and fracture everything so that it releases the gas and then you you know you, you basically take the gas out and stuff. well you take the poisonous water out first the, all the drilling fluids and everything else that you just drill down through all that you know the water and the rock and everything else you drill down through there pull all that poisonous water out and then you and liquids out supposedly and then you get the gas coming out of the thing you know and that's not going to make problems man in his greed, greed will destroy the earth if there's enough money in it you know that, all right? Uh, and that's science. Uh, the Bible says it too, but modern science is just starting to catch up to the Bible. It's kind of interesting. But when people come to Matthew chapter 24, and they quote verse 36, when somebody starts to set dates for the rapture, and they say, but the Bible says, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Uh, is it talking about the rapture? No, it's not. It's talking about the second coming. You say, oh, then we can know the day of the rapture? Uh, no, because there's no day given. All right? And the Lord doesn't tell any Christian in the Pauline epistles to come in and say, uh, you know, hey, um, why don't you look at the stars and the, the astrological signs and you're going to see the time that I'm going to return. People have been stretching at this thing to try and prove this rapture date. And uh, the reason for it, I'll just get right to this. I'm not going to lead into it. Um, Satan wants so bad to cover up for the fact that the body of Christ is going to be leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, number one, because all doctrinal debates are over when the rapture hits. So if the devil can start to prepare people to come out and say, it wasn't the rapture, it wasn't the rapture, all the posties, there's no, there is no rapture. Those people were just crazy. The, the, these weird pre-tribbers and stuff, they just committed suicide as another cult or something like that. They'll, they'll cover it up. All right, so the posties, they're busy trying to cover up the rapture because it's very, very dangerous to the system that they're part of, that Catholic system. Um, you know, it teaches against a lot of the doctrines of Roman Catholicism. I mean, how do you have purgatory when Christians are immediately called up to be with the Lord? Uh, no, you've got to go through the time of you know, purification because Jesus' blood wasn't enough to pay for your sins. See, and there's a whole bunch of other things. Of course, if all the faithful Catholics would leave if they're saved, according to Catholic teaching, if they all get up at the rapture, well, that goes against Catholic teaching of the permanency of the church. The church is supposed to last throughout all time, but if all the faithful Catholics go up, you know, the Pope's gone and all the cardinals are gone and all the bishops and the priests and the nuns and the monks and the, you know, they're all gone, you know, over a billion people, up they go. Uh, who's going to rule and reign on the earth? See, so the Catholic Church has never liked the pre-trib rapture. And these people come out, it was a Jesuit conspiracy. Please, please. That thing has been passed around and passed around. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. But the other group of people that try to discredit the rapture are the date setters. They'll claim to believe in the pre-trib rapture, but they'll set dates specifically so that they fail over and over and over and over again. So now people get really gun shy and they go, I used to believe in a pre-trib rapture, but I had my hopes dashed because I thought he was coming and he never did and blah, blah. And there's a lot of people that are like that, you know, and, and some wing nut, you know, date setter will go, well, you know, I don't believe that way. Yeah, but other people do. Other people do. And here the body of Christ got another black eye again because of these false prophets coming out and yelling and screaming about September 23rd, September 23rd. And now they're going, it was funny because this one guy, this Scott Clark guy that was doing this whole Revelation 12 sign thing, he came out, actually it's the 24th now. The sign kind of slowed down a little. So it's the 24th. Uh, well, we're past the 24th now. And now some of them are saying, okay, well, you know, um, uh, the, the birth process started on the 23rd and it isn't done till October sometime. So we still have time. You know, it's just like, give it up. Give it up. You're not going to know the day or the hour. Give me a break. You say, but I thought that was about the second coming. It's about both, brethren. The, t the timing of the rapture, you cannot prove from the Pauline epistles when it's going to happen. You have to go to sources outside of the Bible to prove prophetic events. Um, so God was uh, a little bit lacking then in what he provided to us. The Bible's not enough. You see the problem? What did Satan say when he came to Eve in the Garden of Eden? Yea, hath God said? 
he caused her to doubt this book. That's what's going on with all this date setting stuff. They can't show you plain scriptures that tell you when the day and the hour is. They have to go to astrology and they have to go to Hollywood movies putting September 23rd, 923. Oh, it's in the movie. It's secret. They know what's they know something's coming. <laughs> I mean, it's it's absurd. It's completely absurd. And I had so many people attacking me because I came out against this whole 923 thing. I said it's another false prophecy scam. And I had all these people attacking me. Not one of them has apologized. Not one of them has come forward and had the guts to say, or the character to say, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said what I did about you. I shouldn't have rebuked you and stuff like that. I fell for a false prophecy. None of them has, have said it. You're going to see. You just wait and see, Brian. You just wait. It's going to happen on the 23rd, and, you, and you're not going to get a reward because you weren't looking for Jesus to come. You know, how does that work, too? Uh, I'm looking for Jesus Christ to come every day. There's an old saying, perhaps today. Yeah. I gotta look for some kind of special thing in the stars and in the secret Illuminati writings or something like this that that we can know the actual day, you know. Stupid nonsense. But what about some clear scriptures that teach about the imminency of Jesus Christ? All right, because there's only really two possibilities for those of us that are saved and understand the Bible teaches a what people would call pre-trib rapture. Uh, if you're saved, the Lord is going to reveal that to you. Uh, if you're lost, you're going to go on continuing to believe the truth that you're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Very true for people like Stephen Anderson and all these other posty toasties out there. They're going to go into it because they're not saved. So, fine for them. Um, but there's only two ways to look at this thing. Either the Lord gave us enough information that we can understand the day, the date of the rapture. We can understand when it's going to happen. Or, number two, it's imminent. It could happen any day, at any time. Those are really the only two possibilities. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. What's the other? What's the third possibility? Either there's a day it's going to happen and we can know about it, or we can't know the day and it's imminent. And again, the posties they they get all upset about the the doctrine of imminence. You know, and they'll they'll say, show me one verse of scripture. Well, I'm going to show you a bunch of them, but uh, show me one verse of scripture that proves the imminent return of Jesus. Why are they so upset about that? Because they're not looking for Jesus Christ. They're looking for the Antichrist. They're looking for the New World Order, the Mark of the Beast. They're looking for all this stuff to happen. Why? Because they want to see signs. They don't live by faith. Don't even talk to me about it. They believe, and you'll see them. You'll watch them. Watch them. They'll say, "I'm just these these pre-tribbers. They're going to have the biggest deception, and, and they're going to they're going to be led into error." And and what? And what? They'll claim to believe in eternal security, and yet they'll get all worked up about pre-trib rapture believers, and oh, I'm just afraid of what's going to happen to them. What is going to happen? You know? I mean, what do I have to fear? If I go into the time, I'm not going to lose my salvation, according to the people out there. See? It's weird. It's a weird system. What's really behind it? The post-tribbers, all of them, are still in their self-righteous, prideful sin. And they can't wait to go into a time when they get to uh, prove themselves. Prove how spiritual they are. Why? Because they don't believe in the blood of Jesus Christ washing their sins away. They never came in a broken, contrite spirit and truly became born again. Think about it. That's why Catholics are so excited about the time. That's why they vehemently hate the pre-trib rapture. Because they love this final time of purification. I just literally was on online a little bit earlier today and there was some Indian guy, you know, and he's dressed in this orange robe and he's like in this Pentecostal church or something. He's like, he's like, the pre-trib rapture is a lie. I used to believe it and now it's a lie. It is not true. I was going to preach the one time and I was there and, you know, Jesus told me to read Matthew chapter 24. And now I read it and Jesus say, the pre rapture is a lie. And I'm going like, Jesus didn't tell you that, you stinking false prophet. Jesus didn't tell him anything of the kind. But you see, that's what's happening. And he said, the church must go through a final time of purification. That's what they all believe. That's why they all get all excited and stuff and 
some people aren't going to make it, you know, and stuff like this. Why? Because they're papists. They're Catholics. They're works salvationists. Even the ones that, oh, I believe in easy believes. And if you pray the prayer, you believe, the you know, and stuff like this, like the Anderson Snake crowd, the Jack Hiles crowd, they're works salvationists. Absolutely. You have to be part of their system or they'll say, you're not saved. You have to line up with their beliefs or you're not saved. Just as simple as that. You say, well, isn't that what you teach, Brian? No, I teach that you have to line up with the book. And there are areas where we can dis agree to disagree and all that stuff. Sure, I'm not right 100% of the time. I realize that. I've made mistakes. I've had to come back and correct myself and say, oh, I'm sorry about that. I was teaching that and I was wrong and whatever else. But you look at my ministry here when the Lord speaks through me and you look and you say, okay, is that what the Bible's teaching? Yeah, okay. Then you're not lining up with Brian Denley or you're lining up with the book because I line up with the book. That's the standard. But 1 Corinthians chapter 11, let's look at the doctrine of imminence. And of course, the little Anderson Snake zombies, give me just one verse, just one verse. Well, I'm going to be giving you a whole study here. You know, you use all kinds of verses to twist the thing. Is it? No, it's called uh, using lots of scripture to prove the point. You know, they seem to think that if uh, the only way I can prove the pre-trib rapture is if there's a verse that says, and the body of Christ is called out before the time, or before the uh, tribulation or something, raptured out before the tribulation. You know, there has to be a verse that says that. You can't look at all the Pauline epistles and just look at scripture after scripture after scripture, literally hundreds of verses, which prove that the body of Christ isn't going to be here in that time of Jacob's trouble. You can't do that. No, you just have to have one verse. And, you know, scripture after scripture after scripture proving that there is no set date for the rapture. It's an imminent return. And instead of going through all the Pauline epistles and looking at scripture after scripture after scripture, no, 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 no. I just want one verse. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, you see. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, says here, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. It's not to pay for your sins or to get you into a state of grace or whatever like the Catholics teach. Verse 25, After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The New Testament starts with the death of the testator. Read Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 through 17. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 is not the New Testament doctrinally. It's in a collection of books called the New Testament. It talks about the bringing in of the New Testament, but doctrinally speaking, it is Old Testament. The New Testament begins with the death of the testator when he shed his blood on the cross. That's why he says that this cup is the New Testament in my blood. That's when it starts. Verse 26, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, look at this, Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Well, now look at this, okay? 26. Uh, that means um, 2 times 6 is 12. So, and if you would reverse, uh, take a 6 and put it onto the 12, that would be 18. <gasps> 2018, it's the time of the... <laughs> Give me a break. No, it says, till he come. You show the Lord's death till he come. What are you supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be examining yourself and, and saying, you know, uh, thinking about what Jesus Christ did on the cross to pay for your sin. How long? Till he comes? When's he coming? I don't know. Keep judging your sin until he comes. You see, that's how it works. Or until you die. You see, it's just that simple. Now, if there is some kind of a day and an hour that you're supposed to, until, you know, May 21st of 2018, you know, it's, it's funny too, because some of the brethren have brought out the very good point. This was, you know, I, I brought out this point in the Harold Camping study back 2011, I think that was, 
or 2010 or whenever that thing was, that nutty nonsense that came out with that guy. Um, but, you know, he was talking about it's going to be at 6 o'clock. Rapture's going to be at 6 o'clock. I remember that. And I was like, okay, in what time zone? You know, is it just going to, like, wait for, you know, to go to each time zone? Like the people in the Pacific time zone, you know, here in America will say, you know, it's like 6 o'clock, they're gone. And it's like, you know, central time, they're going like, we got like an hour to go, you know, Eastern time. It's like, ah, two hours, you know, <laughs> over in Australia. And I, you know, I guess, you know, you're, you're like 12 hours, you know, ahead of us and stuff. So I guess you get to go first, um, you know, and it's like, where does it, where does the rolling rapture start? You know? And I think they was actually calling it that the rolling rapture, you know, that, that it would just be like six o'clock an hour later, six o'clock, you know, and just <laughs> like, <laughs> stupid people. But, uh, you know, we're supposed to examine ourselves and, you know, till the Lord comes. If there's some kind of a day and an hour that the rapture is officially going to happen, uh, well, wouldn't it have been revealed to Paul? Oh, that's right. No, it comes later through astrology. The Revelation 12 sign. Oh, you know, and, and, and Hollywood puts it into movies, a secret code, you know, decoded secret archive. People fall for anything. But let's continue reading here. Verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Hmm. Again, another, you know, scripture there, that if the Christians go into the time of Jacob's trouble, and you backslide, and you sin, and you mess up, and you take the mark of the beast, worship the beast, because, you, you know, I have to have some food or whatever. Um, how does that work here? When we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. You get a sealed, blood-bought Christian, takes the mark, they're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption, but they just took the mark, and Revelation 14 says if any man takes the mark, he gets God's wrath. How does that work? Posties don't like to deal with that one. They'll just kind of uh, change the subject very quickly because they can't handle the Scriptures. But again, it's about judging your sins. That's the whole thing there. And there's no indication of judge your sins up until a certain time you know, uh, the year 2018, you know, or something. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the charity chapter. Charity is the word not love, like the new versions change it to. Char uh, yeah, ch charity chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. <laughs> oh, I'd be rude in speech. <laughs> Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall come to pass eventually if you continue to predict the right sun and moon alignments. And, oh no, actually it says, uh, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Why? Let's keep reading. Whether they be, there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. So, in other words, man's wisdom, man's understanding is not going to be perfect. It's faulty. Sometimes people will try to give prophecies and they fail. Well, then, you know, but, but we can know the day and the hour of the rapture, you see. We can know that. I mean, there's prophecies and stuff like that. Who's going to get elected or something like that. Really important stuff, you know. Um, I mean, we can't know that. Some of those prophecies will fail. But, uh, you know, um, the rapture, we can know the rapture, right? No. Keep reading. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. What is the that which is perfect? Well, two interpretations of this. Some people say when the Bible is finished, when the scripture is finished. Well, I believe the King James Bible is perfect. But that's not what it's saying here. Let's keep reading. And the other interpretation is Jesus Christ, that which is perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 11. 
When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We're like children right now. We don't have perfect understanding of what our Heavenly Father is doing. But here's the thing, verse 12. For, we, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. It's not talking about the completion of Scripture. This passage is talking about when we see Jesus. We will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. We'll be changed like that at the rapture. And again, compare that to the second coming in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, and Luke 21. Compare it to the second coming. Where do dead saints go up? They don't. There's no mention of dead being resurrected in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. Not one word about dead saints coming up. For now we see through a glass darkly. Word of God likened to a glass, a man beholding his face in a glass. But then face to face when we see Jesus. Now I know in part the Lord will reveal some things to you. He will reveal certain things in his word. But nobody knows this book completely 100%. Not going to happen. But then shall I know, even as also I am known. Isn't it going to be something when you see yourself the way Jesus Christ sees you? Hmm. How about that? Talk about a humbling experience. I mean, maybe that's why the 24 elders are falling down before the throne and taking their crowns off and throwing them. I just thought this was a weird thing. I mean, whoever the 24 elders are, whoever they come turn out to be, um, that's a pretty high position. I mean, they're around the throne and stuff like this, and they're seated there and everything else. They got crowns. They're 24 elders. High position. And they're standing up, and they're, you know, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And they're falling down before them, taking their crowns and just chucking them across. I was going to say the floor, but the clouds or wherever, you know, like that. Why? I'll be known even as also I am known. You know, I mean, we realize how bad of sinners we are right now. Amen. <laughs> but uh, what about when we actually get there and Jesus Christ, we now see ourselves through his eyes. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> what a thought. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Okay. Um, prophecies fail, brethren. Have you seen uh, supposed prophecies failing? Yes. Well, then when are we going to know when things are, you know, when are we going to have that perfect knowledge? I'll say it that way. When we see Jesus, when are we going to see Jesus? At the rapture? Oh, I think that we can have it revealed to us uh, before then. Well, then you're not going to get the revelation through this book. You're going to have to get it someplace else. Because this book doesn't tell you when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be ta taking away his bride. So you're going to have to go with your own knowledge or the occult. Like all this astrological sign stuff. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Now if you want a real good one, somebody says, show me the doctrine of imminency. Okay, this is where you turn them. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. Okay, here's where you get them. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God, repentance, from idols, you're turning to God from something, uh, and it's not unbelief to belief. You're leaving your system of idolatry and turning to God, turning your back on the old system. Mm-hmm. Turn to God from idols to serve, change life, the living and true God. Hmm, how about that? Another good way to define biblical repentance. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Wait a second. I should maybe get a new version. Nah, I don't feel like it. Maybe my eyes need to be adjusted a little bit better here. 
wait for his son from heaven. That can't be right. No, it has to be uh, wait for uh, the Antichrist to show up. Then we'll know that we're starting the tribulation. No, it doesn't say that. Maybe um, wait for the new world order. Wait for the mark of the beast. Yeah, I, I, every time I look at it, it says to wait for his son from heaven. Um, wait a second, though. Oh, I just got the, the, the amazing revelation just came upon me. I should make a little angel thing. Oh, or something, a little light come down like this. <laughs> no. Um, to wait for the day of the rapture. Brethren, it's going to be September 23rd, 2018. <laughs> uh, no, it says uh, to wait for his son. All right, you understand? We're to wait for his son waiting for Jesus. What does that mean? Imminent return of Jesus. Christians are to wait for his son. That's imminency. There's nothing that we have to look for. There's no mark of the beast. Antichrist confirming the covenant. Uh, the temple being rebuilt. Whatever else. I mean, we can see that stuff coming. And you go, okay, I see that stuff. Then Jesus Christ has to be coming and getting closer. You know, it's been well said. Uh, if you are driving someplace, um, say it this way. If I drive to southern Maine from where I am here in Bridgewater and I head towards Bangor, but I want to get off at, uh, you know, um, Patton, Maine or something, or Island Falls, which is a town between here and Bangor, well, I might not see, when I drive down to Holton, I'm going to see a sign that says, Bangor, that many hundred miles down south. Uh, well, I don't see the sign for Island Falls. <laughs> uh, no, but the big city down there, Bangor, I see that sign. You see? But I know the closer I get to Bangor, I'm going to eventually meet Island Falls. You see. Eventually I'm going to come to Island Falls and say, oh, there's my exit. Bye-bye. Do you understand? The closer, the more of the signs of the second, or the uh, t time of Jacob's trouble, excuse me, the more of those signs we see of wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, all these different things coming to pass, the mark of the beast, the Antichrist, basically, you know, he could be ready to get on the stage here soon, the world stage. The reemergence of Roman Catholicism as a world religion, as a world superpower. All the wars and the crusades against the Muslim nations and things like this, and all this different stuff. You can look and you can say, whoa, we're getting closer to a Bangor, but uh, our exit's coming up soon. See? When? Well, you see, we can go here to this chapter and we can read 1 Thessalonians. How many letters in the in, in word Thessalonians? Well, there's, and see, we can take that times the number of verses here in the first chapter and we can get to just shut up, you know, enough of the false rapture date setting. Okay, I know, you know, people like Robert Breaker, they make really good money off of suckers, gullible people, you know, that like to watch the videos and just, you know, click on it and stuff, you know. But uh, for those of you who actually believe the King James Bible, realize this has to be your authority. And if this book doesn't say anything about you knowing and giving you a day when it's going to happen and a year, then don't waste your time listening to people to tell, the, tell you that you can know the day and the year and the month. They're lying to you. But, like I said, if you want a really good verse to talk about the imminency of Jesus Christ, 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 9 through 10, right there. To wait for his son from heaven. We're waiting for Jesus Christ. The imminent return of Jesus Christ. That's the next big event, prophetic event for the body of Christ. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Why? We can understand what's going on. We can see the signs and the times and things rapidly approaching. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 
talking about that millennial kingdom. It starts with the second coming there. That day is started by the sun coming down, you know, to the earth, I'm saying. You know, the sun appears, I'll say it that way. Verse 3, for when they, now, let me just stop there. We go down through these verses. Look at the distinction between they, others, them, versus ye, brethren, you, we, us, ye, your, you, yourselves. Paul's writing to save, and he's talking about lost. The they, them, they. Verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Hmm. We are going to, but they're not. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Um, we're not going to ever know the day or the hour of the rapture. And people in the time of Jacob's trouble won't know the day or the hour of the second coming. That's very true. Uh, you can use the thing about no man knoweth the day or the hour, in reference to the rapture, certainly. Understand that it's the context of the second coming, but it's true of the rapture. Nobody, nobody's going to know the day or the hour. But we are told here, uh, what's the verse here, um, verse 6, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. All right. Uh, the Pauline epistles do give um, different things about the end times, prophecies of the end times. Uh, just show you real quickly here. Um, if you go to First uh, Timothy chapter four, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You see that there. Second um, Timothy chapter three, verses one through five. Again, more prophecies of the end times. Second um, Timothy chapter four. Um, Verses 3 uh, down, down through, you know, probably verse 5. Um, there are, in other words, there are prophecies given to us of the last days. So, you know, I, I know that, you know, if you get into the imminency thing, the imminent return of Jesus Christ, a lot of the brethren will say, well, you know, Jesus could have come back at any time. Well, I understand what people mean by that, but it's not really technically true because there are prophecies that Paul says, these are the things that you can watch for. When you start to see these things happening, know that you're getting close to uh, the Island Falls exit. Okay? Understand it that way. So, we can watch and be sober. Um, is it a sobering experience to you? You get out there in the world and you're starting to get to thinking about your job and you know this and that and stuff and all these other, other things. And all of a sudden you watch some kind of video on recent prof prophetic events or you see something in the news or whatever and you realize whoa that's something that the Bible talks about and all of a sudden it snaps you back into that reality it makes you sober see it sobers you up and you go wow that's what the Bible said was going to happen you know I mean you're driving someplace and you, you go into a bus stop or whatever and there's you know, somebody there and they're like, I have the new such and such chip, you know, and I, I have it implanted in my hand. And you go, Ugh. you know, you go into the grocery store and there's a self checkout line and you go, OK, yikes. And you go and you look and there's cameras everywhere and you're going, man, you know, this is what the Bible prophesied. What are you doing? You're watching and you're being sober. And you're looking around going, well, I don't know the day or the hour. I don't know when you're coming, Lord, but uh I know I'm going to be going home to see you soon. And you know, yeah, well, brother, there could be war, there could be this, there could be that. It could put off the rapture for another 10 years or something. I understand that. I understand that. Um, you know, the, the imminency of Jesus Christ's return, you know, you think imminency, you think, you know, that it's going to be an immediate thing. Kind of like, well, because it's imminent, it could happen at any time, then it must mean it's going to be like, just like 
any time now, just like, oh, it's got to be really, really, really soon. Well, it could be, but we still could go a few years of having to be here on this earth. You know, I know it's vexing. I know it's, it's terrible, this world and stuff like that. I'm tired of it. But you know what? What's it say here? We're to do. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. You know, and I'll say this, and to my own cutting on myself here, there's times when I've just been like throwing the towel, you know, hey, the Lord's come back soon. Just forget it. And I'm not real edifying to some of the brethren. Um, I'm not very good as a father or a husband um, because sometimes I'm just like, well, we're going to be leaving soon, so why bother, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I did that for years. Um, pushing really, really hard to get a lot of videos done and a lot of work done and things like that. And, and um, I've been really trying hard to get out there and just do little day trips or do things with my wife and my son. And, and, and I've been sharing some of that. I don't share all of it, but I've been sharing some of those, those times just to show you and encourage you. Get out there and enjoy what God has made for you. Um, just because the world is miserable doesn't mean you have to be. All right? And there's no sin in going out and enjoying God's creation, being when you're out there and just praising Him and saying, Wow, Lord, it's just breathtaking out here. I can't wait to see heaven, but this is great, Lord. And just, just brag on the Lord a little bit. You know? He deserves it. He's worthy of your praise. I mean, that's what you're going to be doing for all of eternity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, worthy to be praised. But let's continue. More verses on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Another favorite place to go to for the little posties, uh, just to prove their ignorance of Scripture. Because it's so funny. Because uh, they'll go to uh, verse five usually, and um, that's where they stop. They won't continue reading. They'll take it completely out of context. Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. What's that talking about? It's talking about the rapture. Okay? That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now what a lot of the brethren do is they'll say the day of Christ because other places it's talking kind of about the rapture and the, and the judgment seat of Christ, you know, that kind of thing. And they'll say it's it's the same thing here. Um, well, I'm not going to be troubled if I hear that the day of Christ is at hand. All right. Um, I think it's talking about in this reference here. I think it's talking about the day of the Lord. Okay. And it's called the day of Christ. Again, you know, and, and there's some of the brethren that argue with me on that. I'm not going to be super dogmatic about it. You might be right. It might be the rapture thing here. But why would they be troubled about it? This is something that we can kind of go back and forth on. I don't know. But here's the thing. Okay, this is the important part of the passage, whether it's rapture or day of the Lord there, whatever you want to say. Here's the important part. They're troubled by what people are saying to them. And here is what Paul says. Look at this. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there cometh falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Wait a second. What is the temple of God? 1 Corinthians 3. Your body is the temple of God. Well, then how could Paul be saying this? He's telling them there are two things that are going to happen before the day of Christ. Okay? there's going to come a falling away first. That does not mean the rapture. It's not a falling away could also be catching up. No, that's just people that are desperate to try and prove the rapture and they twist scripture to try and do that. It's not right to do that. The falling away is the you know, people departing from the faith that you read about in uh, over there in Timothy. Um, that's what it's talking about. All right? That's this falling away that happens. Right now, are we seeing that? Yes. <laughs> Has professing Christianity uh, morphed into something that people wouldn't have even recognized 100 years ago? Uh, yes. Okay. 
I mean, there were Catholics 100 years ago that had better moral convictions than today's evangelical professing Christians. So, but let's continue here. And the second thing, by the way, is the man of sin being revealed. Remember ye not, verse 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? So he's referring back to his first letter to them, talking about what we read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. Okay, now that's where most of the posties will stop at verse 5. They don't want you to keep reading. Because, see, what they say is, we're here at least to see the Antichrist. Because look, right there, the falling away, the apostasy there, falling away from the faith, departing from the faith, that's there, and then the Antichrist is revealed. So we're there at least to see that. But see, this is why they don't want you to keep reading. Verse 6, And now ye know what withholdeth that he, the man of sin, son of perdition, might be revealed in his, Jesus Christ, the church age, where Christians are, Christian, member of the body of Christ, okay, you're of Christ, revealed in his time. So something there is withholding the Antichrist from showing up during the time that the church is still on the earth. What's going on there? What is the restraint there? What is the holding back? Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The spirit of Antichrist is certainly on the earth right now. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. He who now letteth will let. Let means hinder. So, now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Something is withholding the Antichrist from showing up. He who now letteth will let. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit in the life indwelling a Christian's body. We are letting, we are hindering the Antichrist from showing up. Every single time they try to come out with some kind of deal or whatever else, the papists, you know, they try to come out with some kind of thing or the Pope tries to come out scores of Christian articles coming up and exposing the Pope and how dare you. He's like, you know, we are hindering. I mean, just, just think, what would happen? What would happen if all Bible-believing Christians went like this? Shut their Bible, put it down, said, no more ministries of any kind, no more preaching, no more teaching. We're just going to go and we're going to live. Let's just say we're all going to be off-grid preppers. Okay? We're all going to move out to little communes in the middle of nowhere and we're just going to just forget the whole world. And we're not going to oppose anything. No opposing uh, sodomite marriage laws or transgender stuff. We see perverts walking into the bathroom of their choice. We just go, hmm, and we turn away and we say, I don't see anything. You know, How quickly would evil take over? But we can't do that. There's something in us, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in us, I'll say it that way. We see things and we go, and it's, and it's vexing. I mean, I'm not uh, a normally, well, I guess I am somewhat confrontational. <laughs> That's not really true. But, you know, I'm not normally someone that just goes and gets in people's faces right away. But that one day, I was downstairs here and this charismatic cult building across, right just right over there, about 100 yards away from where I'm standing right now. And they decided to have a rock concert right out here. And it was so loud. It, I mean, you, if you've seen the video, you know how loud the thing was. It's on my secondary channel. And, uh, and it, was, it was absurd. And it was just like something in me was just, um, again, the Holy Spirit. just And it was like I was literally, I felt like almost like a hand pushing me outside. Like at first I was just like, oh, just keep your mouth shut. Just whatever. We'll just go away for the day. And it was like, get out there and you rebuke them. Tell them to stop it. You know. And it was just like the Lord. I mean, I just like went stomping across there. And I was just like, you know, got in the, the pastor's face and just said, what are you doing? You know. And uh, I was angry. Why? The Holy Spirit was behind that. You go to some, out to some store or whatever else, and you see some wicked thing or whatever else and whatever, and you're just, oh boy, this is wrong, you know. You get around people and they start saying, I don't think anything's wrong with the gay marriage, blah, blah, blah. And you, you know, and Lord's just like, you feel that building inside you, the Holy Spirit saying, say something. Well, you know what I think about it? You know. You just you feel compelled, you see, what's going on. We are the ones that are hindering, letting this, this Antichrist from showing up. How is the Antichrist going to come to power? Not until the body of Christ is left. He who now letteth will let. 
we're letting them until he be taken out of the way. And you say, oh, see, the Holy Spirit has to leave. The Holy Spirit's omnipresent. We got you. No, you didn't. Because you see, he who now letteth will let is the Holy Spirit until he, who's that? Jesus Christ. The body of Christ is still here on the earth. Now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. His time is Jesus' time. This is the time of the church here on the earth. When the Holy Spirit that is within us, we are hindering the Antichrist. When the Lord says, okay, body of Christ is finished, that last soul is saved, he is taken out of the way. The body of Christ leaves. Again, what happened with Saul, the road to Damascus? He gets knocked down and he says, and he's like this, and, and he says, who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Paul never attacked Jesus physically, but he was there for the stoning of Stephen, and he was getting, you know, saved people, Christians, and, you know, putting them in prison and stuff like that. You see, if you're lost, and you come and you decide to shoot me, you're actually shooting part of the body of Christ. Something to think about. And I'm going to, as soon as I see any kind of developments with the Antichrist kingdom, you know, I mean, it's happening so rapidly now, I can't report on everything, but when I see major things or whatever else, what the Lord tells me to say something about, I'm going to be bringing videos out about it. I'm going to be doing whatever I can to expose the thing. But when the body of Christ leaves, you see, we go up. The world's yours. Satan and your minions, go ahead. The Antichrist is going to come to power. You see? <clears throat> Verse 8. And then, notice, until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Right? That wicked is the Antichrist. And again, read Revelation chapter 4. John goes up, sees the 24 elders. Revelation chapter 5. There's a great multitude in heaven. The 24 elders, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb out of every people, kindred, tongue, nation. And then a great multitude of angels that are there. That's the body of Christ. We're there in heaven. Revelation chapter 6, the first seal is open. The rider on the white horse comes out. That's the Antichrist. You see? It all lines up. The body of Christ is out of here. Right there, verse 7. And then the wicked is revealed. Revelation chapter 6, the Antichrist is revealed. Verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Read Revelation 13. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And that's, you know, who the post-tribbers are looking for. Post-tribbers, you get them to be honest, which is very difficult. You get a post-tribber to be honest, they will have to admit, you say, are you looking for Jesus or are you looking for the Antichrist? They'll say, the Antichrist. Who comes first? The Antichrist. How can you know, how can you start to time out when you get to go home to be with the Lord when the Antichrist shows up? They're not waiting for Jesus Christ to come. They're waiting for the Antichrist to come. So then they can know the approximate time when Jesus is coming. That's what's going on there. Okay? So you see it again there. And again, Paul is rebuking them because they're not looking for Jesus Christ anymore. They're starting to look at the, the, all the stuff that's going on and everything else, and they're starting to get worried and whatever. Two more places to turn to, and then we're done. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. It says here, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give to me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Eminent return of Jesus Christ. It does not say... All those that love the date that is later revealed that shows us when the rapture happens. <laughs> it doesn't say that. All they that love the, the, the time of Jacob's trouble and the, and the Antichrist and the mark of the beast and because it's time to be purified. you know. No, it doesn't say that. Do you love the appearing of Jesus Christ? Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, it's like a woman and she is expecting her husband 
or her fiance, we'll say it that way, the man that she's engaged to, betrothed to, to use the Bible term, and she doesn't know when he's coming. She has no idea. You know? And for her, she's just like, maybe he'll come today. But uh, you get another woman who's wicked, and she says, I want to know when he's coming. Why? Well, I want to do a few things and stuff like that, you know, and as long as, you know, like the Proverbs woman in Proverbs 7, the adulterous woman, you know, my husband's on, away, he's on a long journey. Don't worry about it, he's not coming back. You see? A adulterous woman, a harlot, wants to know when her husband's coming back. How long are you going to be gone, honey? You know, what's the day and the hour that you're coming back? Why? She wants to go out and live in sin. But the chaste virgin, the woman, she doesn't need to know when her husband's coming back. Because she's going to live right. She's going to be there for him. She's going to be faithful and true to him the whole time. And he could pop in at any time, day or night. And it doesn't matter because that chaste virgin is going to be waiting for him. And she's going to be doing right when he comes. Think about that. <clears throat> you're going to get a crown if you love the appearing of Jesus finally Titus chapter 2 verse 11 through 15 for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ looking for that blessed hope. When? When September 23rd comes around or the Feast of Trumpets or maybe springtime? No, every day. It's purifying hope. It's a blessed hope. Verse 14, Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniqu iniquity and purify in unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, as long as you know he's coming soon, right? No, just zealous of good works. Constantly judging yourself, remembering Jesus' death on the cross, showing his death till he comes. You see? These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. That's what I try to do. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Authority. A Bible-believing preacher has authority. We don't speak like the scribes do. We say, the Bible says it. I believe it, and if you don't believe it, it's because you have a problem with the book, not with me. There are certain things that are open to interpretation, open to some debate back and forth with the body of Christ. There are other things that are just clear as crystal, just thus saith the Lord. There is no timing of the rapture. You can't prove it to me from the King James Bible. From the text of Scripture that's written to Christians, you can't prove it. And you can't prove the exact day and hour of the second coming. You can't prove that either. So you get somebody saying, well, I, I think I can. I think I, it's been revealed to me. You're a liar. You're a false prophet. Well, you shouldn't be saying that. I mean, he's done a lot of good work. I mean, this brother, he's, he's your brother in Christ. Why didn't you go to him privately? Blah, blah, blah. Because it says here, these things speak and exhort and rebuke, rebuke with all authority. Is it in the scriptures? Chapter and verse? Where is it at? Well, you see, the sign is up in here in heaven, and we got the, the if you look at Virgo, the virgin, and shut your stupid mouth. Shut up. I'm not interested in what you have to say. But brother, it's up, see, with this sign here, and the Jupiter is going to come into the womb, it's going to spin around and do three cartwheels and two 180s and a few burnouts, and then it's going to come out. You're foolish. You've been deceived. There are no scriptures. I will rebuke you with all authority because I have a perfect written standard. So why well, don't believe that way? Then you're not a Bible-believing Christian. Go back to your world of occultism, an extra-biblical interpretation. Try out the uh, catechism, or Vatican Council too. here. Or here's a catechism. There you go. The writings of man. 
Go to the Methodist Church, get the Book of Discipline. Whatever you want. Go to some other New Age occult religions and things like this. Throw some astrology in there and whatever you want to do. But don't claim to be a Bible-believing Christian. You're not. You go outside of this book to try and prove some kind of date of the rapture, you're denying the words of Jesus Christ, and you're denying this very book right here. That's just a simple thing. The Bible teaches the imminent return of Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches that we're to look for Jesus Christ, not for a bunch of signs and prophecies that do fail. That which is perfect has come. Jesus Christ is going to come back and He's going to teach us exactly what this book says and exactly what this book means. And when the rapture happens, the body of Christ goes up and the lost stay down. That's why the rapture has to be covered up by Satan. He has to do his very, very best to get the posties to come out and say, the pre-trib rapture is a lie. Stephen Anderson's going to have a funny little conference there and stuff like this. I saw November 1st through the 5th or something, they're going to have all these great preachers, great man of God and everything else. You know, a bunch of little windbag sissies that don't know the Bible, reject the scriptures. That's what they're going to have. The little uh, uh, Twinker Bell conference. You know, they're not going to address anything real. Um, you know, the Lord's helped me to bring out some studies on this pre-trib rapture issue and things like that. They've never been answered. The points the Lord's given me. Because it's what the Bible teaches. They can't handle the Scriptures. They wouldn't even attempt to. They just have to pretend that I don't exist. It's kind of funny. But uh, that's going to be it for this study. I just wanted to show you some, some uh, Scriptures on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. There is no date. And we know that Jesus Christ is going to be taking His bride away before the time of Jacob's trouble gets started. Uh, where what is hindering the Antichrist from showing up. It's exciting, you know. But uh, live your life, you know, in anticipation for Jesus Christ coming back at any time. Uh, it's a purifying hope when you do it that way. But if I looked and I said, okay, he's not coming back till 2018, September 23rd, 2018. Well, that temptation is going to be there to kind of, you know, I don't think he's, you know, he's not coming back today. I got another, oh man, I got another like almost a year. Oh boy. Well, you know, I can do this and then I can kind of confess it and forsake it at least for another week. And mm -mm. Nope. That's not the way to live as a Christian. The way you live as a Bible-believing Christian is you look and you say, okay, chapter and verse, there isn't any telling me when Jesus is going to take us out of here, when the body of Christ is leaving. So... Hmm, I guess I should probably get busy serving the Lord and stay busy serving the Lord and stay busy keeping my sins judged and look for my Savior. And while I'm looking, look around me and be thankful. You need to remember that. Be thankful for what He does in your life. So, that is going to be it. Um, we're going to close here with a word of prayer but before I do uh, I had a brother write me and um, asked for prayer for a friend of his they're in Finland and uh, her name is Merja I hope I'm saying the name right M-E-R-J-A and um, she has a brain tumor she's 35 years old and she's suffering a lot of pain very bad headaches and back aches and things um, so I'm going to pray for her and I'd like the body of Christ to pray for her as well um, so, you know, and, and, you know, if you're out there, you know, brother and if uh, sister, if you're watching, uh, there's a lot of natural cures and things like that, that I would really look into nutritional, uh, remedies and things. Um, Dr. Josh Axe has some good stuff. I, you know, I'm not endorsing everything he says. Um, Eric Berg has some good stuff. I used to recommend John Bergman. Um, I don't anymore cause he's just a very foul mouthed new ager. Uh, I don't waste time on him, but Mike Vander Sheldon, another doctor there that works with Bergman, uh, they, they get a lot of, into a lot of things as superfoods and nutrition and things like that, and that's what's going to help in that situation. Prayer, yes. Can God heal? Can God take away the brain tumor? Absolutely, sure, but uh, God also gives us uh, His creation out there that we can learn from. We can eat the right types of food, and you'll be amazed at how well your health is going to respond to that. 
So, um, but please, everybody out there, uh, play, pray for her. her name is Merja. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you, Lord, for your word. I do thank you that uh, we can know for sure that um, you are going to be coming back, but uh, you aren't going to tell us the date, Lord, and uh, we should look for you every day. And I pray, Lord, that uh, the body of Christ out there would not fall for these false rapture date setters and uh, that you would please... Uh, shut the mouths of, of these false prophets, Lord. And um, I know in your word, Lord, back in the Old Testament, the false prophets would be killed for getting the day wrong. And now people don't even seem to care when they get the day wrong, and they just continue to defend them, and it's disgusting. And I just pray, Lord, that we would stick to your word. And if it's not in your word, that we would uh, just dump it. And I do pray for Merja, Lord. I pray that you would please ease her pain and uh, give her wisdom about uh, proper nutrition and things. And, and uh, Lord, I would even pray for supernatural healing for her. Um, I just really do pray, Lord, for her at this time. And I just uh, ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, that is going to be it for this study. Um, just wanted to, to say this thing, because, you know, again, I, this is one of the big posty things. I hear this and stuff. And, Give me one verse of Scripture for the imminent rapture. Well, uh, that's not the way to look at the Bible. There's, you know, you look at the totality of what Paul is saying to the body of Christ. And you'll see it there. And again, you know, a lot of these people, you really can't argue with them because they'll just, they're non-dispensational. They'll just go all over the Bible and just steal what they need to, to steal, take verses out of context, just rip them out of context and plunk them down for Christians. And you say, well, what about this verse here in the the context of what verse you just took. Well, yeah, that's, uh, um, uh, uh, they'll make excuses and things. So, but uh, the Bible definitely does not teach that there's a date that we can know when the rapture is going to happen. The Bible does teach that we are to look for Jesus, which means it is an imminent coming. There are things that we can watch. We can look at the world and we can say, okay, these are the signs that Paul wrote to Timothy about. These are some of the things Jesus spoke to the Jews about, we're seeing them come to pass, we're getting close, but it could still be a few years, brethren. So, I uh, just wanted to put this sermon together, and uh, just hope you've been challenged by this, um, just to continually be ready for the Lord to catch you away. And um, so we thank everybody for your prayers, and uh, we will see you in the next study.